So good morning. Hopefully Matt and Elspeth are going to be able to join me. Oh, look at this. The fantastic trio. Oh, the terrible three. I'm just going to move us into the top corner. Morning, Elspeth. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, yes. absolutely fine. How's Wales this morning? Uh, it's uh, not too bad. It's uh, it's a little bit cloudy, but uh, it's not raining. <laughs> it's great news. It's amazing how we all start with the weather, isn't it? Morning, Matt. How are you? Very good, thank you very much. You are also in Wales, but um, I, I'm just down the road from Melbourne, <laughs> about thirty miles. So yeah, the awesome. same, same <laughs> weather. Nice Great. <laughs> so uh, w w thank you very much for joining us uh, this morning, Elspeth. Um, uh, Matt and I have done lots of webinars this summer, and we were really keen to kind of catch up um, with yourself, really, because there's there's been a lot going on in in, in Wales, uh, and I know that you and I have been talking. Um, Quite a lot around looking at the provision of devices from a one-to-one -one perspective and, and we've been talking around that blended learning approach and um, perhaps you could just give us an instruction about yourself oh right uh, well i'm executive head teacher uh since last march looking after uh king henry in abergavenny uh and crossy kylie school in cumbran um so that probably totals around two and a half thousand students um and, you know, passionate about schools. Uh, children get one crack at education. Therefore, we've got to do the best uh, for them. Uh, and obviously, the COVID-19 crisis obviously made us reflect on how we can support all of our learners, particularly our more vulnerable, uh, those with additional learning needs and those from disadvantaged backgrounds. And how can I get, you know, it became really apparent getting a digital device into the hands of every child was really, really important. And so that's something uh, that we've now been working on for the past six months um, with the aim that we really do move forward. So that's, you know, yeah, really a little bit about us and where we are. Fant yeah, fantastic. And I know we're going to touch on a lot of this stuff as, as we go through. Um, and Matt, for those who don't know you, uh, yeah, hi, so I'm Matt. I am Senior Lecturer at the University of South Wales, uh, working with future teachers um, to understand the role of technology to enhance learning. Um, as well as that, I'm an Apple Professional Learning Specialist supporting schools like uh, Elspeth's um, and, and working alongside you to, to do what we can to help schools realise their visions. Exactly that. Uh, it's great to have you uh, on today as well. So um, I guess we've got a bit of an agenda. It's a bit of a kind of a loose agenda. There's a bit of context we're going to put in this morning and then we'll, we'll start kind of deep diving into a few more things. But it is really kind of looking at that that kind of discussion of the traditional attitudes um, and how that's been implemented into the classroom. And I think that that's, we, you know, that's a hot topic of conversation. Certainly, um, as Elspeth said, COVID's made that decision and that thought process very, very different over this kind of last eight, nine months. But we're already talking about how the technology can act as a tool, both um, you know, in and out of the classroom, and, and we've had experiences of that, Matt, as well as parents, um, and how Apple technology specifically can support blended learning uh, and the approach to teaching and learning, um, making it more collaborative, you know, very much more personal. We've talked a lot about that, um, and also uh, learning through creativity, which is a really powerful tool. But I think also one of the things that um, we've talked about is is uh, the ability now more than ever, the only positive thing that we've seen come out of COVID is is maybe now the ability to have a change in the education system and how we use technology is, is really prominent. And we might need to look at the change in our considerations and our ways of thinking. And that's kind of where we're going to be kind of talking today. But I guess a little bit of context um, for those um, who haven't seen this sort of slide before. It's really interesting that the reality is, is uh, Matt, you're teaching university students, you know, currently potentially looking to be, you know, teachers of the future, but actually living in a world of digital already. And, and we talk about 1994. I don't know if you can name that man. Anybody? No, Matt, how do you not know that? I'm too young. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> AOL. So AOL, right? Uh, America Online. And that was that was that big thing. You remember you had to plug in the cable into the wall and you had these funny signs. A bit like loading up the spectrum, wasn't it? That's kind of what it was like. But but 98, we've got Google, um, you know, and, and we live in a world of Google now. We search everything online. Uh, college students, you know, secondary school students and absolutely primary school students have lived in a world where technology absolutely changes the way um, that we, we live our lives, the way that we communicate. And actually the way that we can learn uh, and certainly from a teaching perspective as well. Um, but some key key things that have happened. And, and the reality is, is we know that 65 percent of students are likely to do a job 
uh, that doesn't yet exist because of technology. If we, we, we look at like 2008 when the App Store came out, you know, the, the amount of money that's been earned by app developers, uh, and this is something that Apple talks about, you know, hugely in, in the, 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 the billions actually is that we talk about. It's really changing the way um, that we think about the use of technology. Um, and then 2020, you know, COVID, that's not a technology sign there. But actually, we live in that world as well. And actually, what we're going to talk about today is really about some of the decision making processes that, that we're, we're probably having to make. And, and I'll come back to you on this elsewith. But I think, you know, we've got to trust our gut a little bit on this. But Steve Jobs famously said, you can't connect the dots looking forward and that you can only connect them looking backwards. And that you actually do have to trust that the dots will somehow connect to you in your future. And I think what we, we absolutely know is that, um, I guess, Elspeth, from your perspective, is that you and I have, have, have talked most of the summer and you've had to make some, some massive decisions, not only from a, a, a head teacher's perspective, but also from a technology perspective. Um, do you feel that you've, the decisions that you've made have had to be forced? Or I know it was already on your journey, but you kind of had to push things forward a little bit, haven't you? Yeah, obviously, um, you know, pre-COVID on the horizon, we were moving at a pace to integrate digital technology into our teaching. And there were some significant challenges as far as upskilling our teaching staff to be able to do that. And whereas I had some really good practitioners, probably the breadth of that expertise was quite narrow. Um, so obviously the challenges set by COVID-19, we have moved in eight, nine months now to a, a phenomenal distance. And it would... Um, but on that journey, a lot of um, fears have been allayed by staff in that they found the technology is relatively easy to use. Um, I had some key staff within the school that were already using Apple products. So obviously we talked to the staff about what product would support teaching and learning best in the classroom. Um, and that was very important because it's not just about getting a device into the chat hands of every child. It's about getting the right device. Yeah. Um, and I think that was uh, very important. So we spoke to them about that. Um, and then the challenges we had when children, you know, we, we found some sort of things, you know, when they all bring a different product in for bring your own devices, A, they weren't very good at using the products. But B, we didn't know how to support them on those yeah. products when we had lots and lots of different devices. So certainly there are a few things that happened in the study. We thought, right, we've all got to be on the same device. And the device has absolutely got to support teaching and learning because this isn't just about the COVID crisis. This is actually about moving forward so that we are developing those, uh, you know, digitally literate uh, young people. Really important. Absolutely. I'm just going to move us to the bottom of the screen because I think um, what, this is one of the things that that, um, that you, you kind of highlighted in, in the way that Matt and I would also talk about is that the reality is, is, is the education system. And by the way, before I say any of this, this is this is not aimed at any teachers because they do a fantastic job or anyone in the education space. But the reality is the education system is very much um, in that Victorian age where traditionally a teacher has been very much at the front of the class. Um, you know, that our, our students are essentially what we call passively engaged or passive consumers. The, the content is given to them. And, and actually what we're trying to talk about is by developing the skill sets um, through the use of technology for collaboration, curiosity, you know, independent learning uh, and perseverance and all those sorts of things. Maybe if we, we, we look at things like project-based learning, and I was reading something about Finland where they have phenomenon, phenomenon-based learning, um, you know, the, but, but actually our students become active producers. Um, and there's, there's some really great research, um, specifically uh, from Wams, Fernandes and Meads to talk about um, the, the learning through creative, uh, the creative elements gives you a, a much bigger uplift in retention knowledge versus the traditional uh, kind of written uh, retention, but Matt, um, I know you've supported um, a, a lot of a lot of customers this this or a lot of schools this summer um, through this kind of approach. What, what's what's the th kind of the word on the street from you? I think it's just the the fact that um, you know, COVID's obviously caused a massive upheaval for everybody, but it, at the same time, it's an opportunity to have a look exactly as you said it. What are we doing that doesn't work and why are we doing it uh, mm -hmm. and what can we do differently? And I think where where technology has been the emergency answer 
for a lot of people because you didn't have a choice back when lockdown happened. It was if you had technology, then some element of teaching could carry on. If you didn't, it was it was an awful lot of printing stuff out and driving around houses. Right. So so technology was that instant emergency. But what came came with that was people being able to think, uh, I think Elspeth said it herself, it's not actually as scary as I thought it was. So that opportunity to try something different in a world where everybody was trying to just do their best, um, no judgment. Again, if people are just trying to do something so that education could continue, because we know very well teachers didn't stop in March, there was no, you know, schools weren't closed, they just weren't open physically, but yeah. education carried on. And teachers were trying to do absolutely everything they could. And I think because people had to say, well, how am I going to, you know, do a Teams call or a, a Skype meeting or or use a digital resource, people jumped over that barrier that initially was that fear of failure. People just thought, well, I've got to do it anyway. Um, mm -hmm. And I think what's happened as a result of that is people now starting to see the, the fantastic opportunities that exist. And I think also, I mean, you talked about those, the, the six kind of elements at the top there, the collaboration, curiosity, those sorts of things. I think we'd all agree, and specifically in Wales with a new curriculum on the horizon, that they are the key kind of elements that um, link back to, to the four key principles of, of a new curriculum, which is more than just content. It's, it's the additional things that a learner would have. And I think what we've seen, and, and a lot, again, a lot of the evidence starting to come out as a review of what's happened over the last few months, is that the people that have succeeded in a, in a world where it's been kind of unknown are the, the students that have had those those elements, the, the students that can, you know, be, uh, you know, resilient in their learning and, and, you know, support themselves, be creative because they've got time to do things in a slightly different way, manage their own time. And we know that technology can support with that. And, and no one here is ever going to say technology can replace the existing you know, education system with, where teachers have a role. But I think what we'll hopefully look at today is how it can change the role of the teacher um, and support them in different ways. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm not sure, if Elspeth, if you've got anything you wanted to add to that to that piece or you... Um, it, it's really interesting because you know, I think what we've tried to keep forefront is the quality of the teaching is so important, whether whatever your device is. And certainly I'd just like to echo, echo Matthew's point in that we are so lucky in Wales and that we are moving to this new curriculum. And this whole uh, integration of technology and the possibilities it um, uh, allows us to consider are just phenomenal um, and you know we talk about those four purposes in Wales and uh, having the technology now and what we've learnt and how we're going to do it it means that um, I hope when this is all over uh, put it this way I'm going to be desperately disappointed if we go back to our Victorian schooling mm -hmm. I am absolutely passionate that the two schools I lead will look very different um, so that we truly are managing to uh, integrate technology because we know that we do need digitally literate young people you know so that when they go into that workplace they really can um and thrive and that's what we're trying to do absolutely and i think what's 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 been really interesting in, in from from my perspective in wales is that the 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 access to the content that you have online available already is is is, is great um, and I think that, that um, when we started talking at the very beginning, Elspeth, one of the things that we, we talked about was the, forget devices just for, for a moment. Actually, what are we trying to achieve? What are you trying to achieve? And, and what, what are the, going to be the, the measurements of success for you, um, especially where you have two schools? And actually, you know, we're, we're not going to hide the fact we've, we've also been talking to a couple of other executive head teachers. And, you know, Mark Belly is, is one of those. And similar to you, has two schools. And, and we were looking at how do we... How do we get one-to-one -one devices into those um, particular, you know, uh, particular schools as well? But there's lots of things that you have to consider as a head teacher that people never really see at the, at the front-facing bits. And, and I brought this up here, but we talk about these four kind of key areas that, that really are important and, and vision and strategy, the learning, the teaching, you know, the environment, the infrastructure. And I'll, and I'll touch on all of these, but the strategy you had was very was there from the beginning. Um, I think what what we can talk about possibly is that 
there was there was kind of two areas for you. One was was having a, a standardised type of device for your students, and and I know that it's going to be slightly different in both schools. But there is a there is a format in one and a format in another. But the the important thing was access also to content and through uh, Hub, um, you know that was that was key. Um, but that led you to have to talk about some of the other considerations, uh, and one of those was where Matt would be able to support the capacity of your staff um, from a teaching perspective with with the use of devices and through the Apple professional learning piece, um, making sure that the workflow was going to fit into what you were trying to achieve and, and access to students. Um, you know, funding is, is always a hot topic, but the management and security of those devices, especially when they're going home, was something that you were, were really keen to, to make sure was in place um, because that, that, that adds to the value to your parents as well. Um, was there anything from a from an IT perspective that 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 was a real barrier for you? Um, I think for both governing bodies, funding was a concern. You know, I think yeah. that, uh, I'm passionate about making sure we support our vulnerable, uh, uh, disadvantaged learners. So making sure that we had that, I didn't want anybody to have a different device. I wouldn't want anybody sitting in a classroom feeling they were of a different, uh, you know, almost embarrassed by their device. So it was really important. And one of the governing bodies uh, was incredibly proactive and they've been fundraising. Um, plus, we've used our pupil development grant. Plus, we've had some additional funding for the Welsh Government. And so we've been using that. So we will be in a position where every child will have the same device. And I think that was so that was a, a, a bit of a barrier because governors were concerned about that equity piece. Uh, and even though we've put that out to parents, uh, a few were concerned about the equity piece. Mm. Now, when we spoke to them, they were fine there. Yeah. Um, saying that, I've got an awful lot of parents saying, come on, when are you going to be launching this? You know, <laughs> so I've got this real balance. But I think the equity piece was the biggest uh, yeah. So funding will always be a, a, a difficult because obviously if I move to a certain type of device, I need to make sure my staff have got the same device, particularly in one school. And, you know, we'll just have to stretch the budget and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if they want. And, and I'll just be cheeky and see where else I can get money from. Uh, I'm quite good at that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, well, so and that that brings us on actually to the to the I guess the uh, the funding models um, that have been around you know in the old ways and and you know leasing is is one of those things. But we're seeing a we've seen a massive uplift this summer um, around the the use of uh, parental contribution schemes where um, parents. I think I think the reality is what we know and and Matt will probably vouch this is we never we never see parents who are not kind of engaged in, in in supporting a project if they can see that the the tool is going to benefit the learning for their child and and the and the outcomes are going to be there but you you're right is is you know you talk about you know robbing peter to pay paul kind of thing and the reality is is what we absolutely know when you go down a route of a one to one model is that there are some additional costs in some areas but there are some big cost savings in others um and matt and i were talking to a school very recently um where um, we suggested if they didn't have to buy the traditional workbooks that they would do on a year to year basis. And this, this is a small primary school, by the way, they would save sort of eight to ten thousand pounds a year, which was suddenly money that they they could use to fund kind of the project. But the the traditional spending mechanism is different in every school. But also, I guess the old ways and how we always have done things is is sometimes the barrier. We need to think a little bit outside of the box. And we're really fortunate working with you that you do kind of think like that. Um, but there are some considerations from the old ways, and 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 that is the infrastructure that you've got currently, mm. um, and what happens when you suddenly have devices on site and they're all hooking up to the network. Because one of those things you do is working in the cloud, um, and we're pretty confident that's going to be okay. Um, but uh, but is it something that you've had to budget for separately? Um, we will put it into our budget. It's not going to be a, you know I haven't you know our, our IT provider. I know they're working with you to make sure yep. the right mobile device management. I will imagine all schools across uh, our provider are going to see an uplift in the costs because. We're either demanding better 
MDMs, mobile device management, or increase use of bring your own devices. So therefore, I think we're all going to see an uplift in our costs. Um, but in, using the mobile device management system, we can put that license onto the bought product. Um, so I'm hoping that will minimise some of the costs. But you're yeah. quite right. Obviously, we probably will be using less uh, exercise books, workbooks, uh, those sorts of things. Plus, um, some of the teaching we've been doing more recently. You know, I have got subject areas that are moving away from textbooks. So some of those costs we've had historically, we won't have. So it is a chance for us to relook at our funding model and how we spend our limited capital, our, our limited uh, funds. Yeah. So um, I guess with that, as a leadership team in your school, um, Elspeth, and, and, you know, how did you, I mean, these are some of the things that we've talked about, but in terms of dealing with COVID, how would you say that your transition um, was genuinely? I mean, um, apart from tough, because we know it was tough. Yeah. But. <laughs> um, I would say uh, both schools, the offer at the moment for both schools is phenomenal compared to where it was in March. Um, but um, we did know it was probably coming. So the week before we were running crash courses in Hub, um, uh, Google Classroom. Um, and so without too much work, we got there in the end. Uh, and it required both senior leadership teams to do a lot of work. Managing parental frustration, expectation, those sorts of things was very difficult to start with. Um, and also, none of us had really done it before. So you had to really, you were problem solving on a daily basis, too much work, not enough work. Um, so that was and one of the things was just getting digital devices into the hands of children. And, you know, I did have senior staff, A, finding out who they were, because sometimes people didn't want to admit to that. Yeah. Um, so getting devices into the home and we were repurposing old laptops. Um, so we managed to do that, which which was really important. Um, and again, in Wales, because we work uh, across the region, we have the regional consortia and they were able to flag up resources. So... We were, you know, this just in time professional learning for staff was incredibly important. Um, but, you know, being in Wales, having access to the virtual learning environment, the hub was unbelievably important and access to free Office 365, Google Classroom was just great. And then we used our experts. You know, we had those staff uh, again because we got the digital competency framework. Both schools had digital champions uh, yeah. and they will provide webinars for yeah. staff to support them we did we then moved to a position where we were explaining to parents what our expectations were as far as what they should be doing through um, in the day and you know we were putting this out via twitter on the website both schools have a a, a parent mail uh, and it was very much in that first phase do what you can when you can and gradually we were upping the engagement. Um, and then you've got about well-being. Well, our both well-being teams in the school were on the phone. You know, they've, they've made thousands of phone calls to there's that whole safeguarding piece. But then there's that bit about finding out whether the children are able to access the learning. And funny enough, we've actually done quite a lot of well-being with parents as well. Um, and so that's been important. Uh, the well-being team have been, uh, you know, a lot of well-being resources were part of our offer. And yeah. when the children came back in for our check-in, catch-up, prepare, that had a really strong mental health aspect. But we did that with the staff as well, because we thought if we don't get our staff right, our children aren't going to be right. And there was a lot of anxiety with staff before they came back. Um and then obviously this uh, they talk about, you know, over communication and whether that was just in time professional learning, but also teaching the children. And so when we did come in for our phased reopen in the summer, that was a fantastic opportunity to upskill our students. Um, but that was the point at where I knew we had to move to one device because we did encourage our children in one school to bring their devices in. But I think they all brought in a different device. And that was absolute carnage as far as getting them on the bring, bring your own device. So that that was a you know, that nailed it for me that. And also they didn't even know how to use them. Yeah. Uh, and it was. So, yeah, it's been. So we're now at a point 
where we both schools have had children self-isolating. We've had the fire break and that went relatively well. Very different model now. We're just saying, children, you follow your timetable. We expect you to be in your form time. You know, very different uh Le- a sort of expectation yeah. because we're in this for the long run now. Um, but the other thing is um, we're really checking engagement now. We, you know, I've got uh, a, a year group first day out today of our younger students. So we've got to, uh, our wellbeing team on the phone. They're just manning the phones now, literally going through the list, just checking all these children can get online. Uh, and I think you've just got to do that, you know, because yeah. some are going to struggle today, I would imagine. Yeah, and I, and I think we're, we, I think uh, it's not a case of if, it's more a case of when. And, and I think, you, you know, you guys have, have kind of done that fire break. You know, you kind of head of, head of the curve a little bit. And I know that there's, there's year groups that are out all over the place um, in, in lots of different schools. I think, Matt, um, you know, Elspeth raised some, some really good points there. And, and, and I think one of the things that you and I uh, have talked a lot about this summer is, is access to content. I mean, that's, that's important. And, um, you know, the ability to, to access Hub, uh, or Office 365 on, on iPad, you know, you, you uh, did some great videos, but we, we did webinars around this. Um, and as a parent, and you've got a son, um, you know, I saw Max do a, an amazing piece of artwork on his iPad when he was home for the self-isolating, or well, not self-isolating, but isolating. I think just just the, the final few points that Elspeth just mentioned then really about the um, the, the reasons why why she feels it's the same device. I think there's there's a critical element there because if teachers are going to invest their time in creating stuff that students are going to use, they've got to know that the students can actually access it. Um, and we know that Office 365 or Google, whichever kind of back end platform you're using, is going to be accessible pretty much on any device. Ultimately, does it restrict you to the what you can create? And I think where where we've spent a lot of time this summer, Tom, is is looking at the Yes, you can do this within those platforms, but you can also do this, which might might support your learning resources and take it from the traditional. Because I think if we're honest, you know, the use of spreadsheets and and word processing tools um, and and presentation tools have been around. And you know, they were the things I put on my CV twenty years ago that to say I can use those products. I think we've moved on from from those three things being the pinnacle of IT. I think there's so much more that students can do now that is in keeping with the world going forward, like podcasting, movie creation, uh, drawing, you know, all of the, the different elements that you now have access to from a from a professional point of view. We're not just talking here about, you know, the ability to to create a podcast um, at, at a student level. You know, students can use the same technology now on a, on a device that, that professionals are using. Um, we also talk about YouTube as, as a job. You know, I used to laugh at this when I was still teaching um, in secondary school, when students would say, you know, I want to be a YouTuber when I'm older. But we'd see now that there are people that are making a pretty decent living out of being YouTubers, yet do we teach them those skills in school? Um, it's not to say everyone can be it, but but I think if we look at the job security of a YouTuber during a pandemic versus the job security of someone who works in a shop, unfortunately, during a pandemic, you know, one of mm-hmm. them actually has self, you know, I, I, I'm in control of my own destiny, all of those sorts of things. And and is that something that we bring into school? And, and I suppose if you go into primary schools, you'll see an awful lot of young YouTubers um, with the capacity to be able to do that and bring that that to life. I think the other thing as well is the idea of, um, having the technology in the classroom as well as at home. And I think, you know, we're talking about blended learning today is this overview. And, and one thing to pick up on that is that there is a huge opportunity for students to be engaged, have the classroom expertise of the teacher in that face to face, but then have opportunity to take that learning with them further forward. I mean, my son, as you mentioned, Tom, had to isolate because he was in contact with someone who who had a positive test so was off school for two weeks whilst his friends were all in school um, and the first obstacle that i think we had was although my son has technology he has it at home he doesn't have it in school so there was a little bit of a disconnect between the continuation of learning um, of what he did in the classroom to what he did when he came home now i'm being an educator myself i do obviously ask him an awful lot about what he's done in school every day and I, I do try to get him to recreate the classroom experience at home with me. Um, and you've seen them. Tommy does a lot of sketch noting to kind of, you know, d- deeper dive into his understanding. 
but sometimes the difficulty he has is, well, that's in school, Dad. I can't see it and I can't remember all of it. And actually, mm. he wants to learn more when he gets home. But because there's no connect between what he has in school and what he, what he can bring home, there's a difficulty there. So, um, you know, that's something that, you know, hearing Elspeth talk is, is really, really positive because it's that it's, there's a line, right? You, you, you're making school go beyond 330 mm. And children who get into that flow, that zone of, of I want to learn more, can just extend the lesson. You know, schools have a finite time of how long you have in front of the student. However, digital allows that time to just be elongated. If you've engaged them and give them access to things, they can take that learning to, to whichever extent they need to. And unfortunately, at the, the world we live in at the moment, if they do have to self-isolate, it's just it's just crazy because you've you've just moved that classroom into the digital space where hopefully those resources that have been created just get carried on they just yeah. get carried on to the to the home learning environment yeah and i think and i think um just just on that matt is you know we talked about this about you know matt's having to to to, to or being being at home and that learning doesn't need to stop at, at three o'clock and you know, we we've done some great projects at academia where we worked um, with a particular, was a particular university whereby you know they had three and a half thousand devices um, and everyone really talked quite a lot about how many devices are in that in that university. But actually, the bigger picture was is that the content um, that is available to those three and a half thousand students was accessed over a million times in the first year. But it was accessed outside of that nine to five or nine to two mentality. It was uh, it was in the evening. It was when students had finished their second job or whatever it was. They were learning at a time that suited them. And if we go back to that um, that 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 image that we had earlier on about those students being not passive engagers but actually really responsible for their own learning content, is that they're likely to to have a better retention knowledge, right? Which is really really important. And I, you and I talked about this um, very recently on another webinar. Where my son um, goes to a, a, an academy where um, they um, they were setting a piece of homework to create an e-safety video, and it was download this app. This is what you need to use, and basically um, this is the content you'll need to put in it. And the problem was, as, as Elspeth rightly said, is that these two things. One of the things is the students will have potentially a device at home that um, is very different to any other student, um, or 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 they, it just it doesn't have the ability to download the app and. And actually, this was the problem in this particular situation. They were asking students to download an app that wasn't available for everybody because they didn't have the right device. And then when they tried to download it, they couldn't install it. And so um, one of the things that we, we we talked about, and this is something that we learned from you, is you know using an alternative application. So we used Keynote on the iPad. He put the content into his Keynote, and then he added the voice piece to it. And instead of exporting it as a, as a, as a Keynote, he exported it as a video. And... Um, you know, that, two things for me that was really powerful um, is a that he was able to create a much better content to, or, or video from, in my perspective, because he'd learned a lot more. But also from a child who said to me, Dad, I don't want you in the room listening to me record my voice to on the Monday in the playground. The kids were, were kind of moaning that they couldn't do their homework. And he was like, well, you've got an iPhone or you've got an iPad. Why don't you just do it in Keynote? This is how I did it. And he was showing his peers how he had done his piece of work, which is something that traditionally he probably wouldn't have done just because he didn't do it. And the other thing that was great, actually, us that is like it was done on a Sunday and we started at 12 o'clock and I think we finished at 10 to 3. And he goes, oh, I've been here for like just over two, you know, nearly three hours. And I was like, yeah, he's like, this is great. I loved it. And it, the, the engagement for him was, was was massive. And I think, you know, what we what we're trying to look at is also the future. And what does what does that new way look like? And Elspeth, I know that one of the schools isn't going iPad, but one of the schools is going, you know, is going iPad. Um, but but for you, the consideration was really about access to content um, and and the device that was going to give what we've talked about that that best opportunity, right? Yeah, it was really. It, we've done a lot of work on the school around developing oracy. We think that's really important to improve outcomes for young learners. If they could say it, they can write it. That actually meant, though, when I went to the staff as to which device, they all wanted the iPad because of the ability to record, make films, the versatility of it. Uh, my art department are very, very, um, they are uh, techno, very sort of keen with the technology. So obviously they wanted an iPad. They're looking at animation and all the apps that brought, it brought with it. So it was 
bit of a no-brainer, really. And the staff, uh, maths, because they wanted to be able to to write on on uh, the iPad and hence the the pen as well. Yeah. So there was actually so many of the departments uh, felt that that gave us the greater flexibility. Plus, we already had some of those devices in school, which meant I could then uh, deliver on the equity piece as well. So I think, um, you know, that's why it, it was the iPad uh, there. And then the, all the other things then are really about just really, really good teaching and learning. And so therefore, and having a device, and I want it genuinely, uh, you know, technology is integrated into our learning and our teaching um, and assessment. So we are then a delivering in case, uh, you know, if there are any other disruption to full time, time schooling, we're well set up. But then that whole bit around the curriculum, uh, curriculum for Wales, digital competency, uh, citizens delivering on the four purposes in Wales, actually, we need to have that digital uh, competency of all of our students it's going to be really, really important. Um, so I think, you know, as a school, we would look at our funding and how we use our funding to make sure that we're going to be, you know, now we're going to make this investment, we have to plan long term and make sure um, we can sustain it. Saying that, I think parents now, six to seven, if I can buy a device that will last me for five, seven years, I think most parents will go for that as long yeah. as you come in from the uh, learn what the children are going to get out of in terms of their learning and the skills they learn. But also, um, I think the parents like this idea that it's a managed device as well. I think that becomes suddenly really, really uh helpful for them that they know that it's uh you know there's some uh, a level of safeguarding security yeah. uh well-being around it uh, and that's what makes it very attractive as well yeah and, that, and that's think, the thing I think, sorry go on matt gonna go on absolutely i was just gonna say i just think i think what what you said then in kind of the answer to the first question there why ipad you you led straight with learning right which is which is so important that you considered the learning what was it that teachers are trying to achieve um, and all too often we see that it's, and you mentioned it yourself, let's just get technology in the hand of students. But actually, for a maths teacher who really, really thinks that there's a power to creating a video about process, giving them a laptop with a keyboard probably isn't going to be the quickest way to, to have that outcome. Similarly, for the art teacher, you know, a laptop might not be the solution. So although they've got access, they haven't actually got a future proof device because the the way that maybe your art teachers maths teachers want to work is is really thinking about five years down the line not necessarily two minutes you know and hopefully this emergency response i think that's really important you also mentioned about the parental kind of piece and i think that's critical because i think as as i'll, I'll put my parent hat on this time i don't know schools as i used to although be it, i did used to work in a secondary school but things have changed a little bit even in the in the five years since i've moved on to higher education and i think when the the biggest argument that i have with my son is over we don't do it that way anymore dad um, and that that becomes an obstacle to learning so i want to help him but we don't do it that way anymore dad and i think if you then introduce technology into that you know i certainly didn't have technology when i was in school so therefore we have to assume that there's an awful lot of parents out there that see technology in school, but see it how it's used at home. And, and I think you said it yourself, Elspeth, children don't necessarily know how to use technology very well. They know how to use it to play games and do the things they like to do, but they don't necessarily know the full power of the technology. And if that's what they use it for at home, then parents are going to see that the social media use, the game playing use, all of those things, the distraction, is, if that comes into the, the classroom, that's not really something I'm going to buy into. And I think as you educate the parents about this is what we're doing with it in school, then the buy-in from the parent is to say, well, do you know what? Where, you, where you're asking me to support you with that, I see the added value because now my son daughter has access to a fantastic learning tool in school, but where it comes home with them, they actually now also have a tool at home that they can use beyond the school time. So whereas before I was thinking, why should I buy the technology? Because that's the school's job. I'm now seeing that 
the education goes beyond the school time. So therefore, I see the added value of, of supporting the school in that way. And I think, Tom, we've seen kind of few of those conversations over the summer, where if you can support the parents in their understanding of the added value, so why would they support it? It actually becomes a, um, a full stakeholder engagement piece around funding, education, you know, well-being, all of those things going forward. And I think also we've mentioned that you know the 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 well-being you know isn't just staff and pupils, but also that of parents. And I think what we've seen um, for you know from feedback from lots of head teachers is you know we've having to do these uh, parent evenings remotely and actually they've seen a much higher increase in attendance from parents being able to do this online and it was something well, why would we not we could have been doing that anyway why would we not be doing that uh, now but also i think you're right is it's seeing is believing um and and if parents can see how that the children are learning and, and they, they get engaged and and I think it the reality is is that there is some that that meant that Victorian mentality sometimes is the kids go to school it's not my problem they come home and then we'll deal with it and it sounds very harsh but 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 that is a little bit how you know how we still see see that sometimes so I think the engagement even my own engagement you know I'm passionate about my kids um learning as well um and I was really excited when my Holly, my my eighteen year old daughter, started using Teams at, at college. You know, when she started last year, because for me, I was like, okay, that's great, because actually you can have access to content. Um, I got excited when she started plugging a second screen into her, her laptop, because, you know, because she was trying to do two things at the same time. And 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 certainly this summer, we we've seen lots of changes where the technology, you know, going back to that point about how it changes the way that we live and we communicate, is you know. In Wales, you've you've made the decision about the examination piece, you know, twice over now. And actually, you know, if we look back on if we look back on pupils, you know, being judged not purely on academic skills, but also on the collab, you know, the other skill sets that, that are required for life. And if we look at the jobs, the future of jobs report, and those that are like, you know, the jobs that are likely to exist in the future then sticking to the normal numeracy and literacy piece isn't going to be kind of the piece that we want. But but Elspeth made a valid point is schools will always try and find the money somewhere somehow. But but actually, we need to look at what those new ways look like. And I wanted to just kind of touch on that. Um, and they're, they're, they're kind of uh, probably a couple of ways um, that we know this can work. And the traditional way is that the school has a pot of gold, which I know isn't the case, but, you know, they can just go and buy a device for everyone. Um, and they they can refresh it every three years, but but what we we do know, um, and actually, sorry, I should take it back a slide. Um, forget what I just said. Is that that there is a timeline, and Elspeth mentioned that length of time of how long a device would be. But the reality is, if we if we spend um, our our capital reserves essentially, the reality is is we we make those devices sweat out a really long period of time, and so your best intentions may be that you refresh it after three years something comes up like COVID, you spend your money elsewhere, you go to five years, and actually those devices can sometimes being sort of eight, nine, ten years old. What we're suggesting is that subscription piece, and this is the bit that I want to talk about in the middle, in, in the sorry, in the first column on the on the left, is that um, if you look at the the subscription models that are available, so these are essentially kind of lease models, is you have a really good way of making sure that you have the latest technology because you can refresh it every three years. You never pay the full value. Um, and there are some some benefits to what else you can include into those leases. And actually, um, you know, we, we, we talk to, to, to um, head teachers at the moment and for as little as about £6.25 for just the device, nothing else, none of the extras that we've been talking about today, um, you know, nearly £7, you, you can get a device. Now, the question I often ask their teachers is, could you spare seven pound a month per pupil if you weren't spending it somewhere else? And I know it's really easy to, to kind of give those numbers, but it's a different way of looking at things because in life we subscribe to so many different things, whether it's Netflix, cars, toothbrush. I mean, you can subscribe to toothbrushes, you can subscribe to haircuts, you you know, um, Amazon Prime. But in the education system, we don't do it that well. So what we do rely on is 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 the options that are available. And the other option that, that Elspeth is, uh, you know, is highlighted today with her, with their parents is that parental contribution model where there is an, an involvement and support from from um, from parents. What um, what the school then undertakes around all of the other extras that they have to do around the infrastructure, around the, the the access to the content, you know, the infrastructure in in those elements are really really key. Um, but it's really looking at, at how 
we go back to those four pillars that we had and one of those that we talked about was that 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 vision and strategy and one of the one of the elements in that is having a finalized financial um solution that is sustainable which is as elspeth said we need to make sure that it doesn't just last one or two years it has to go through time and that's that's Tom. i was just going to say in there yeah. i think to, to elspeth's point earlier that that's that comes back to the equity piece right because if you invest now in your learners and you do something which may may get refreshed in six years time right because we don't know in terms of budgets what you're saying is if, if those devices get older and older over time in six years time if i join the school or whatever is that the same equity that students had when they were new and i think where that leasing kind of rotation comes in is that you are investing in a learning and teaching approach where students don't suffer the, the later they join the school to when yeah. you bought the devices in the first place, because what leasing does is keeps things refreshed. What capital spend does is, like you said, and that money gets swallowed up because, you know, a boiler bursts or whatever it might be. Um, what does that mean for that new intake of students yeah. if you plan to refresh, but you can't because funding isn't there and, yeah. and, and go into the equity piece? I think that's that's another element, isn't it? It's a, and it's a really it's a really valid point. And I and I and I kind of knew that, but didn't think about it in the same way. But you're right. I mean, I remember when I was at school a long time ago where you got a book and you go, oh, yeah, five years ago, somebody kind of highlighted this and, you know, scribbled out words and ripped pages ripped out and it, it was very much used you know very much third fourth fifth hand kind of content in the books i think that's the other thing around the digital technology just about equity as well is information um in in the curriculum changes you know as you rightly said matt you know we don't max said we don't learn it in that way now but actually the content if it's digital can be up can, can be updated very easily the books can digital books can be pushed out um to each of those users and it's really, really important. Um, I don't know, Elspeth, if there's anything you wanted to add on the on the finance piece there. No, not really. I think it was just a recognition with both governing bodies that we will never, ever have enough money yeah. for a one-to-one -one device of a suitable, uh, of a decent uh, digital device without asking those parents that wish to to purchase a device. Yeah. And if we do it through the learning you know, and at home and at school, I'm, you know, hoping feedback is our take up should be pretty good, actually, which yeah. is then to meet the gap. Yeah. And I think we've we've seen it in, in customers who have been doing this journey for, you know, slightly longer where, you know, the, there was um, a bit of a hesitancy at the beginning. But the results in, in, in the grades and the, the, the way that students leave the schools, there's kind of a culture now where, if I go to this institution, I'm expected to have a device or, or, to, or to use a device and it becomes part of that, that culture piece. And I think that's, that's really important. Um, you know, I think that I th also ties in Tom, just, just to add there with the professional learning piece, right? About, you mentioned about books being updated and I suppose from a Welsh perspective as well, we talk about the, the contextualized element of teaching and learning and books that are made on mass by a publisher might not necessarily talk to, a student who lives in Monmouthshire or Ceredigion or, or, or in Wrexham. So therefore, when a teacher can kind of create the, their own content, which contextualizes what the curriculum is talking about, but from this local area um, and how to do that. And Tom, we've seen this. It's, it's pretty simple to do, but, but it's very powerful for the end user to know that the content isn't just an off the shelf product. It's something which is relevant and meaningful that's going to meet yeah. the needs of the welsh curriculum but equally professional learning doesn't just mean about the teachers it's the students and equally the parents you know helping the parents understand what this new kind of approach to teaching and learning looks like and how can they engage how can they support because they actually have the opportunity to access it because that technology is moving between home and school so what is it that parents can do to support that whole kind of holistic approach to the to the learning model Absolutely. Uh, and, I, and I think, you know, that, that, that ties into so many things. And, you know, and, and as Elphis said, the, the you know, the, the finance piece, the well-being is, is across the board. You know, also the, 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 the I guess, the safeguarding element. And we, I've got this slide up around the Jamf piece, but also, you know, being able to push content out to students when they're not in school or, you know, um, specifically with Jamf, for example, if a student accidentally deletes an app while they're at home, they can just go and download it again without you know, any complications of, of some of the th things that we've seen in the past. So I think um, f f from our perspective, it's, it's, it's having a much more holistic approach 
um, and, and looking at all of the areas in those kind of pillars that are going to be really important. Um, and I guess it comes to, to that, that point now where um, I, I guess it's um, the, the end of the, the webinar. Um, I, I just really want to say a huge thank you, Elspeth, for, for your time. Um, I know you're, you're hugely busy and re I'm really grateful for you being able to be, be here with us today. Um, no doubt we'll be catching up very soon because we have to because it's things that we, we're moving forwards on. Um, uh, Matt, thank you again uh, for your time. Uh, I know you're very busy as well. Um, and I guess if there are any questions, you know, do reach out to us. Um, we, we're more than happy to, to be able to support um, um, education establishments, teachers, head teachers, and so on. Um, and if you're looking at CPD as well and the use of devices, let us know. Um, Elspeth, anything you want to add before we say goodbye? No, just um, I think uh, I'm really excited about the journey. I think in both schools, uh, moving to one-to-one -one device, I think it's really uh going to take take both schools to to the next level as far as delivering on the curriculum for wales uh, yeah. i just wanted to echo matthew's point the ability to make it a curriculum our, our uh resources wales specific is so important because actually there isn't that much out there sometimes so that's uh, uh, uh you know just another no-brainer for us really and uh, we're excited to be part of the journey yeah, we're, we're excited to support you as well. So um, I know that that's uh, just after Christmas thing. But, but um, yeah, hopefully the, the, the world will be less crazy. The stock will be available again. Um, so that's fantastic. Uh, Matt, thank you um, again. And guys, I will um, leave you to go and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.